Ladies, gentlemen, and a reason of all ages, with the game now being out for a solid couple of weeks now, a lot of people are wrapping up their first journey in Dragon's Dogma 2. And as we all have fun with the end game, or even check out New Game Plus, or hey, if you've stopped playing after finishing the main story, there's nothing wrong with that either, but I imagine everyone who has gotten to this point has really enjoyed the game, and that a core part of why you have is the vocation that you've spent your time playing. Whether you picked only one that appeals to you so significantly that you couldn't possibly choose anything else, or if you're more like me and switch at the drop of a hat to just try and experience every playstyle the game has to offer. Either way, vocations are a massive part of our fun here. So today I thought it'd be fun to talk about the vocations in terms of the future of the game, as it is pretty much guaranteed that there will be a fairly major DLC or expansion for this in the future, whatever you want to call it really, added onto the game at some point. And a core part of that could well be access to more vocations than are currently in the game. So we're going to talk about a number of vocations that exist in the Dragon's Dogma universe that are not utilized for players in Dragon's Dogma 2 specifically things that could potentially resurface. And then I'll go over a couple of my own ideas for potentially intriguing or engaging fully new vocations, as I think this game gives a sort of unique combat sandbox to workshop different playstyle concepts within. Starting off with the known entities then, but on a bit of a lesser known side of it, let's talk about Dragon's Dogma Online. This was a full on MMO set in the Dragon's Dogma universe, but this was never released in the West. And so a lot of people who are even longtime fans of the series don't know much about this game, but it actually had a number of unique vocations that are quite interesting to imagine transferred to the modern single player game, and the one that interests me the most personally is the Alchemist. This uses magic to create physical objects, or more accurately, to transform matter. It changes matter that exists into different matter, and then it lets them full on shove their hand through someone's heart as a result of that, create offensive crystals that can burst and explode, defensive walls to protect you, mines that then blow up after time, traversal tools as well, and they even have a full on like Midas touch type skill where you turn into gold, and if an enemy attacks you while you are made of gold, they will then also turn into a golden statue. This is just like next level realization of an alchemist class fantasy, and that's especially interesting because it is very rare that I ever see a game even try to tackle an alchemist in the first place. But holy crap, this is just a really cool vocation in Dragon's Dogma Online, and I can only imagine this style, this concept of free thinking matter transformation at the core of a vocation brought into the depths of the realization of Dragon's Dogma 2 that could just be absolutely legendary. Then we also have the Spirit Land these wield long lance weapons, very sort of melee focused, but agile and airborne combat with the ability to heal and buff allies as well. Honestly, this is sort of like if the mystic spear hand lost the mystic part of it and was instead something like the holy spear hand, but also had some of the thief's core skills for movement and just a much harder hitting per hit play style, larger weapon, so longer range, great mounted damage as well, but also very agile compared to something like warrior as a comparison. Generally, I think this one was probably overwritten a bit too hard by mystic spear hand now existing a bit, but I could also see it being a separate hybrid vocation as well, honestly. They would just need to do something like give it a more distinct weapon to actually fit the playstyle. Then we also have the High Scepter, and honestly, this is sort of the other half of what became Mystic Spearhand, being a combination of magic wield in one hand and a sword in the other, with some ranged attacks stemming from using the magic to throw the sword forward as a ranged weapon before pulling it back. This vocation could make magical barriers as well, they could use magic to teleport themselves for their own movement around the battlefield, and they could even fire blasts of energy out of the sword itself, like an extension of the blade. This vocation is really cool, and I bet you that they could find an interesting niche for this somewhere in the middle of Mystic Spearhand and Magic Archer, where it is magic, as well as both melee and ranged, in a unique mix of these playstyles. Then the final one unique to Dragon's Dogma Online is the Shield Sage, which is somewhat similar to the Mystic Knight in the first game, being magic tank with the shield, but more specifically, this is actually a wand and shield as your weapon combination, which is a really cool concept to me. Games never really do that. Of course, gameplay-wise, that wound up being relatively similar to Mystic Knights, but with a focus much more heavily on defense. But I think if they brought this concept to Dragon's Dogma 2, they could rework the actual offensive parts of it, and it could find a really interesting place of using magic to turn your defense into offense. Every block proccing different elemental or status effects type of thing, something like that, that could definitely be fun. On that note though, we do also have the two more distinct vocations that were in Dragon's Dogma, the original one, but didn't make it to the sequel, which are the Mystic Knight, the one that people seem to miss more as it is the more unique playstyle, essentially mage and fighter combined, but in a much more grounded and defensive way than Mystic Spearhand is that hybrid. This vocation could do things like reflect elemental damage every time they blocked as an example of this, but it really just was a lovely mix. A 
great hybrid that was clearly distinct from the Mystic Spear Hand that we have now. The other vocation that didn't really make it through then that I, I sort of want to do as a combo is the Strider and the Assassin. Both of these vocations were basically based around a mix of both melee weapons like daggers as well as a bow, essentially acting as a mix of what Thief and Archer do in Dragon's Dogma 2, with Assassin having some more fighter type options as well. The mix was definitely an interesting one, and while I think most of the core gameplay absolutely exists between Thief and Archer, and then considering the existence of Warfare, you can sort of just put those two together anyways and make your own Strider at home, you know? In, in that sense, I honestly couldn't really see this being something they chose to add in, as the whole idea of a vocation that can switch between weapon types is 100% filled by Warfare existing, and so it just wouldn't make sense to add a new vocation that focuses on their ability to switch between multiple weapon types mid-combat. With all those covered then, I got a couple of vocation ideas of my own, nothing crazy in depth of course, but just some base concepts I could see being really fun in the game. The first is a throwing weapon style in whatever way you sort of want to take that, something along the lines of a javelin thrower or a shuriken wielding ninja, maybe a knife throwing bandit, the type of general playstyle where it isn't archery, you aren't using a bow, it is much faster pace, you're not charging shots, and you can even take a hand out of the high scepter playbook from Dragon's Dogma Online and do something like have the ability to magically retrieve the weapon, throw it at an enemy manually using your own arms, but then use the magic to recall it to your hands afterwards. Maybe it spins as it returns and does damage as it collides with enemies. Help. What if even more than that, what if the base class attack is generating a javelin out of thin air using magic, a magic javelin, throwing that into the enemy and it will stick wherever you actually hit with it. Enemy, ground, wherever you actually hit the attack. And then there are just maybe various skills that you have that play around using those locations set by the javelins to interact with each other. Something like connecting them with lightning, like the shock shot from Magic Archer, something that could make every spear currently implanted implode. Maybe if you hit a spear and there's another spear in the certain radius around it, it will then cause a larger explosion. Maybe you could even have like a legendary skill is something like calling all of the currently implanted javelins out and using your magic to just fling them all in a river forwards, like flow one by one directly at a body part of your choice, like a flurry of homing shots that is charged by just throwing them to begin with so that they already exist, like it takes advantage of the fact that you're firing physical objects. Okay, before I get too locked into that one, because I can get very carried away with this, my second concept is another sort of magic and melee hybrid, but this one much more farther towards melee, and it's a big guy wielding a massive two-handed flail, and the actual ball at the end of the flail is almost like a magic impact grenade, in a way, that you load through your skills with magical charges. Maybe you have a skill that has it explode in a radius around the flail when you hit with it, maybe you've got one that makes it have a stupid amount of knockback that pushes enemies away from it when you hit the area that you do, throwing enemies to the floor, making them go off of cliffs, things like that. You could have a skill to either make it buff allies in a radius around you when you hit with the flail, or the opposite, making it debuff enemies around the hit. That seems much more reasonable, honestly, the debuff, and maybe instead of the skill actually triggering directly on use, it just adds like charges to your flail, to your melee attacks, that then expend when you use your light attack. Maybe the light attack expends it on hitting the enemy, maybe a heavy attack instead actually hits the ground with the flail, then causing a burst on the floor of whatever you have charged. And then maybe you could like stack charges, creating like a queue of different effects depending on the order of skills you use, one hit after the next. And then if you do that, you could even have like a legendary skill that has wildly different effects depending on which charge you have currently loaded on the weapon. Yes, this one is getting a little bit wacky, but I love coming up with crazy magical concepts for interesting play styles, and I also really love flails and big weapons. Then the final one that I have is the Goomba Stomper. Very simply, I want a vocation that has spiked boots, trampolines, and the ability to bounce if they land on top of an enemy so that they can continue bouncing on enemies, while also having momentum-based damage so that the higher you go, the more damage you do when you land, fitting with the physics end of the game. Y yeah, th that one is a joke. Unless... I'm just saying, okay, that just about does it then everyone, just a fun talk about some of the lost vocations of the Dragon's Dogma series, left behind in previous games in the series, and not made it into Dragon's Dogma 2, but also the ways that I could potentially see them being brought back in future DLC, which would be a prime location for bonus vocations, and of course then just a couple of my own concepts for vocations for the game, just to have a bit of fun. What are your own thoughts on all this then? Which of these vocations would you actually want to see return in future DLC? Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more and most importantly ladies and gentlemen until next time stay sweet Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye